But if, if she meets one guy or we meet five guys, when they're done, I get to do mine and participate anytime I want. And sometimes I do all through, but then sometimes I'm just exhausted and we go to bed. But when I wake up the next morning, I'm ready to go. And it's really exciting. Welcome to Normalizing Non-Monogamy, the podcast where we interview incredible people from across the entire spectrum of non-monogamy to hear their fascinating stories. We strive to bring guests on the show who have a healthy approach to non-monogamy. However, it's important to remember that everyone does it a little bit differently, and the views and opinions expressed by our guests do not necessarily reflect our own. Additionally, we produce this show for entertainment purposes only. Please be aware that we aren't doctors or therapists. Consult a medical professional for anything regarding your health that you might learn about on the show. Enjoy. <laughs> Stop laughing. I'm not laughing. Welcome to episode 84. We're Finn and Emma. And special, a special Wednesday episode. It's not a special Wednesday episode. It's I a, think just it's special. A, well, it's always special, but it's a normal Wednesday episode. I think it's a special episode. Hey, Steve, don't listen to her. It's you're special. <laughs> all, <laughs> all of our guests are special. Anyway, speaking of this week's guests, guest, yeah, representing the infamous Steve and Cece, just Steve, just Steve. So, so Cece was, uh, is protecting her identity. She has a a job where her voice is recognizable and so she didn't want to come on the show so we get to talk to Steve and he does an amazing job talking about their dynamic as a hot wife couple yeah they've been together over 30 years and they have great a great discussion on rules and boundaries uh, as well as I mean the whole conversation is fascinating so we hope you all get a lot out of this one before we get there we just wanted to touch on a few things that uh, might interest you. The first one we have... Well, and sorry if you listen to Monday's episode. You heard this already. We're going to go through them quicker than on that episode. We'll try, but you can skip ahead about three to four minutes if you don't want to listen to how to come to our Patreon call or where we're going to be physically in person over the next month and a half. Yeah, okay. Here we go. Real quick for anybody who didn't listen. September 18th, that is a Wednesday night at 9.30. We are doing a live video Q&A, and all you have to do to be a part of it is go to our Patreon page, which you can find links to on our normal website, normalizingnonmonogamy.com. Do we have an abnormal website? It's norm. We've already normalized it. Okay. Yeah, the website has been normalized. <laughs> but that call is at 9.30 Eastern time, and all of the information is on uh, Patreon, or pa- Patreon, is on our Patreon page. Also, if you're interested in joining the video Q&A call, you can do so for um, $2 a month. There's $2 a month, $5 a month, and $10 a month levels. So just I wanted a quick plug. There's different reasons we did that. It's all explained there. We don't need to get into it now. But go check us out on Patreon if you're interested in joining. What we are going to get into is where we're going to be over the next 60, 45 days. Yeah. I don't know. But Basically, the month the months. month of October. So first place we're stopping is New York City. We're going to be there for a couple of days. And on October 3rd, we're doing our first uh, meet and greet. Yeah. So real quick, back up about yeah, you, you 30 sk- seconds. You, you skipped a part. We created a part of our website that's now an events page. So... Within that events page, the things we will continually update it with events that we will be doing. And the other exciting thing on that web page is that you can sign up for our email list. Yep. The email list is just about events. There's not going to be a weekly or monthly or anything newsletter. There's not going to be spam sent out. It's just to keep people up to date on events, where we're going to be, when we're going to be there, and how you can get out and meet everybody else in the community. So things that will be talked about there would be like, oh, hey, by the way, we're going to be in Boston for the month of October, and we're going to do an event there, and the details will get emailed out as soon as we have them. Yes. So we That wasn't a hypothetical, by the way. We're actually going to be in Boston. (laughs) Good one. Yes. We will be in Boston for for two and a half weeks in October, and then we are going to be um, making our way to Toronto for the last weekend in October, and we'll be doing another meet and greet there. So- all of the details are on our website or will be on our website soon. Our normal website, which is normalizing non monogamy. 
dot com. Good one. Or you can just click in the little links in the bottom of your podcast player. That works. Save as well. yourself some energy yep. typing. Okay, let's go talk to Steve. Let's go talk to Steve. I didn't do that. <laughs> I don't know. Let's go. Okay, now we're actually recording. Yay! <laughs> welcome, welcome to the show, Steve, and in spirit, Cece. Yes. Steve's wife. <laughs> Maybe Steve's hot wife, but I don't want to divulge too much. Do you mind uh, sharing a little bit about yourself and and who each of you are, and and then we'll talk about why you're on our podcast. Sure. Um, so first of all, thanks for um, helping people become who they are, because um, I mean it's the normalizing part that makes this interesting. Because I think no two people are alike, but we often feel like we should be, and so like having blurry lines to where you just, you accept people um, to tell their stories is really important, I think, for people. Um, I, my name is Steve, my wife is CC-ish, and um, we're uh, between Portland and Seattle, and we are a hot wife couple, and I am in my uh, low 50s, and she's in her upper 40s, and um, we have stumbled into something fantastic that we didn't expect. Yeah, that's amazing. And and just so so people know, uh, she does very much exist. We saw photo evidence. We just, you're very protective, or she is very protective of her, her identity and doesn't want her voice out there, which we totally respect. But we did some background verification and everything's good. <laughs> yeah, she, her voice, it's her voice that would be recognized more than her face. Okay. And so um, it makes sense to protect it, and there you go. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you being willing to share, even with that being the case. So, um, and we're we're excited to talk to you. Yeah. So, I guess maybe how how long have you been exploring the the hot wife dynamic, and and maybe how did you get there? Sure. So we. Early in our marriage, which was most of 30 years ago, we did some playing with friends without communicating, and it turned out to be a disaster, so we just stopped completely. We never talked about boundaries. We never talked about expectations. We just kind of plowed ahead while drinking, and you know, a series of bad decisions took place, which changed relationships and changed lives, so we just stopped, and then we took about a 15-year break, um, and then we accidentally eased into it, and what it was was we found ourselves in a routine. Uh, in our private life and sexually. And so I said, you know, let's make it, let's make things more interesting. Let's um, test the edges and see what happens. And she was real, totally acceptant of it. No, no questions. She just kind of let me lead some things and then she led some things. And then next thing we're on vacation and we um, went to uh, logged into a couple of or created uh, profiles for a couple of adult sites and then we asked, we solicited people to, to come in and watch us in our uh, on vacation. And it quickly morphed into playing with them and then all the things that come with it. And um, it just has really developed quickly. And that was about a year ago. So really it's been fully active and progressing and evolving for a solid year. And, and so it started off as we're going to do this as a sort of a voyeur or an exhibitionist thing. And when you originally pitched it, was it pitched to her as a hot wife thing or was it pitched as a, like, let's meet other couples for couple on couple kind of thing? It was individuals. So she has the, she's the upper 99th percentile of confident. And so she challenges other women. Other women tend to like her at first and then they don't after the fact because she's so confident people are challenged by it. And so we really, we solicited single men to come and watch because we felt safe with it. Um, we had, it was, the boundaries were easy to establish. And so that's how it began. And I want to just back up for a second. Um, I know we keep talking about the hot, like hot wifing. I wanted to, could you describe, I guess, what that definition, what that term means to you in your relationship? Yeah, thank you. So um, hot wifing is when the wife has license to do what she wants to do. And in our case, it's a stag hot wife situation. So I am involved in planning. I'm involved in partner selection. I'm involved in the whole event, but I don't dictate what's going on, but I have an element of control. I can veto anything. So that's not a cuckold where he's being um, um, 
put down or demeaned or mistreated as part of the uh, part of their agreement. Our agreement is we're doing this together. She happens to be actively involved. I happen to be passively involved. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, I think that and, helps. I just want to make sure people understand. And how, how did you transition from, you know, it sounded like it was exhibitionism and then it was mostly with other with other men, but then that you started just, did you just start slowly like easing the boundaries and letting them be more active? I guess, how, how did you discover that this was the dynamic that was going to be for you two? Um, so it's const apparently it's constantly evolving. But in this moment, um, it started as someone watching and then someone watching and said, may I touch you to her? And then he did. She said yes, and he did. And then it just progressed and progressed from there. And um, early on, she was more nervous than I was. I expected you, you recently had someone on who talked about he expected to be nervous and she didn't. And the reverse was true for us. Um, it, it is what it is. You don't know how it's going to feel until it takes place. Um, but I was uh, totally fine with it. It's her who is sensitive of my feelings. Was I going to be hurt? Was I going to be uh, feel uh, small or overpowered or whatever? So we would move through the sexual situation, and she would stop and keep looking at me to make sure I was okay with it, and I was loving it, and to my surprise. Um, and it proceeded to full-on sex, and um, it was MFM situations, a number of them, and it was really hot, and we both enjoyed it. We had huge downloads afterwards where after the guy left and we're sitting around, we talked about what happened, where did it switch, what was exciting for you uh, and you, and back and forth, and a lot of really deep um, deep connections and communications to make sure nobody was getting hurt in the process. Yeah, so I was going to say, you mentioned like years ago you had some play with friends that didn't end well. And I guess this, you, it didn't sound like you talked too much about it moving, like before you, you kind of just jumped in, right. And, to, and then try to download and talk, talk about it after. Were either of you worried about making the same mistakes as before years ago? No, it was truly a different chapter in life. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you just worked through it by communicating and like you said, downloading it afterwards and making sure talking about where those changes are and how you're each reacting to the situations. Yeah. And, and I guess, can you talk a little more about, so the people that maybe look at swinging or the, the traditional swinging dynamic and they are always trying to find equity and like if he's getting some she should get some or if i'm getting some my partner should get some mm -hmm. and i think yeah. sometimes the the fact that there is maybe on the outside some it, it appears to be an imbalance but i guess can you talk about like what you get out of it what what you get out of it versus what she gets out of it and why that is not likely the case yeah um so i look at that a lot um i I believe, and you've talked about it in some of your podcasts before, about the evolution of a person's development sexually and what is important to them and what they find interesting later on in life. It's all about what happened to begin with. What happened to begin with is she was in exhibitionist situations in her life and in my life in a whole different place. I was in a voyeur situations. And so we just went full circle to this thing to end up that I love to watch and she loves to perform. And it's a match made in heaven. I mean, you could we couldn't have planned this. You can't write this. And it's so exciting for both of us. And we just keep ending in the same place. And I've, I've learned the word through these websites, or through the uh, podcast of compersion. That is it. When I heard somebody talk about what it is and how it feels, um, that's what it is. I mean, she's my art. She is incredible. She's incredibly beautiful and very talented and hypersexual. And to watch her is just, uh, it's art. And so I really enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, it, it clearly, I mean, Again, people would say, well, you're not getting yours, but it sounds like the thing you really love out of this is just watching her be her and letting her you know, do what she wants yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah. For a while. And then after a while, I can no longer contain myself. So I have permission to jump in anytime I want, of course. And often she'll look to me because she wants me to jump in, and so I normally will. But if, if she meets one guy or we meet five guys, when they're done, I get to do mine and participate anytime I want. And sometimes I do all through, but then sometimes I'm just exhausted and we go to bed. But when I wake up the next morning, I'm ready to go. And it's really exciting. Just like living still in the euphoria of watch, watching that art take place is beautiful. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I, I was going to say, I imagine if there was five guys, she would probably be tired and ready to go to bed too. But 
I don't know. Um, yes, but she is amazing, amazing. So with me, we have a we have always been uh, really connected sexually, and so we can have time together on vacation or at home or whatever, and I can provide for her five or six orgasms, and she enjoys every one of them. And there are different levels of intensity. Typically, it tends to be some of this, and then it comes down, and then it can go back up in the numbers of sure, orgasms. Sure. We've gone to clubs before, and I can count, and I can watch her have 24 orgasms in a row in a, in a couple of hours, and um, it's amazing. Um, so she's got to this place in life where her body just continuously responds, and so that's beautiful. And to be honest, I can't provide that. I mean, I provide something different. Or we have a deep connection, but we don't need to go for three hours at a time to both get what we want. And But when she goes to a club or when we arrange this type of thing, she can have 24 orgasms in a row. And um, and so I try to count them, but I often lose count because I'm enjoying it, you know? Yeah, because you're, you're in well, the we, moment. We don't blame you. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have, have the two of you, um, right now, it sounds like you've done, done everything together. Have you considered separating at all? Yeah, we're totally not into it. We've considered it. We've talked about it. Like, do you feel like you're being um, uh, idled back? Are you being pulled back? Is something missing? We're not doing this because anything's missing. We're doing it. It's adding something to it. You know, people talk about it being a lifestyle. For us, it's a hobby. We take it. We go into it. We can come out of it. When we talk about work or kids or family or whatever, that just we just put it on hold. Uh, we're not addicted to it, and we don't overdo it. Um, but we really like it when we can. I mean, it's like a great hobby that we get to do when we agree to do it, and otherwise it's on a shelf. Yeah. 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 Have, have you seen... Like, so you've, you've been married for quite a while. And like you said, you, you tried this in the past and it didn't, didn't go well, but have you seen a shift like in your marriage or in your relationship in the last year since you, since you started opening this up? Yes. And so when I heard podcasts before we did this, I was interested in it. And so I was looking because I was wanting to become, to shift into these things. And so I was listening to some podcasts and she wasn't. And I heard people talking about how it improved their marriage, and I thought, what a load of crap. This is people getting what they want, and they're justifying it how they want to get what they want. And I have to say that it's true, because if you can talk, if I can talk about to her about the deepest, darkest experiences and what turns me on and then what scares me, what my fears are in these things, and um, then you can talk about anything about the bills, anything about the house, anything about vacations or friends or you know household things so it has genuinely helped our relationship because our communication is so much easier Mm -hmm. yeah for sure i have to admit yeah yeah are there on the flip side i guess have there been struggles and things that you've had to work through if there's a struggle it is that when we go away and do things we we play a lot out of town we can travel a lot for business and so we do and we're getting ready tomorrow to go um down to Portland, but we get to, we do that probably twice a month or maybe once a month, depending on the season, but I want to do it more. And so on our sites, we tend to meet with people that are traveling through our, men that are traveling through our area, preferably in twos and threes, but sometimes ones. And we just have fun in the meantime, but it can, um, I can overdo it some. And so I have to check in with her and say, how do you feel about two weeks from Saturday? Or how do you feel about three weeks from Saturday? Or should we just wait to go back to Seattle or Portland? Because um, we have clubs we like in each place that are really fun, permissive environment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I mean that just goes back to that that communication. Like you've learned that you got to check in, see where you're at, see where she's at, and yeah. yeah. And you touched on too, like if you said if you can communicate your deepest fears about this, that that you can communicate about anything. What what were or what are some of your concerns going into this and? And maybe can you speak on, on her behalf, like some of the things that she's told you that she's concerned about as well? Yeah, good question. Yeah, good question. I didn't know that she had an exhibitionist side. Um, I just thought she was okay to do things wherever or whenever because um, we're, we don't care. We'll leave the curtains open at hotels or whatever. It's just never been a big deal. We tend to walk around naked in the wherever, on vacation on the beach or here, whatever. Um, but I didn't know that she wanted to perform for a group. And so over time, I've come to realize that. Of course, I also didn't know that I wanted to watch her. So it's just evolved over time. Um, yeah. Yeah. But was there something in there that was a, like that triggered a worry or a concern for you? Or was it, has it largely just been like you, she voices something and you're right there and then you voice something like you just both seem to be tracking on the same path? Hmm. 
I think if there's anything that goes back and forth, it's in the middle of a process. She's looking at me across the room to make sure that I'm still okay with it. Yeah. And I am right there. I am right there. I mean, I could be off. If we're in a club, I can be off doing my own thing. I don't want to miss anything. And, the, the, you know, it's wide open. There are tons of people around. Maybe it's an orgy environment in the, in the side of a club or something. I can do whatever I want, but I'm sitting right there watching and enjoying it. And I hear people pass judgment. Sometimes I see them kind of whispering to each other, you know, um, I'm perceiving negativity or they probably wouldn't be whispering. I don't even care. That's my art. I'm watching it. I'm enjoying it. I have permission to join whenever I want, do whatever I want. And, um, you know, I don't care what drunk strangers think anyway. Well, and, and clearly she's enjoying it. Or she, yeah. Oh, so. wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Have you had any concerns uh, around safety for her or you in, in mm-hmm. pursuing this? You bet. Um, so we're safe sex all the time. And her first experiences included uh, condoms. And so she likes the taste of condoms. What? So, um, so she's, um, con- she's fully condom uh, safe for uh, oral and vaginal i mean okay, condoms wow. all the time every time there one time we saw i think at some point at the end of the podcast you tend to ask if there have been challenges or things that we'd worry um we were with a guy one time in a club and she turned around and saw a condom on the floor and she thought well where'd that come from and then she reached back and he didn't have it on and so he had pulled it off uh, which is not okay and not in accordance with our agreements and not what we said when we went into the room. So um, she said that needs to go on or that's not going where you think it's going. And so he put it back on. Um, and then the following week we had to go get tested because we just couldn't worry about um, hearing anything or um, being infected with any uh, STIs. So I don't yeah. remember the question. Yeah, so, so no, there. but that's, that's perfect. The safety of it all. Yeah. So you, yeah. it sounds like between condom use and also testing, and and, 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 com- and the conversations. Well, and the situational awareness, right? That too. To, like, it, I'm sure it's very easy that you're caught up in the moment. There's things happening. First of all, to notice that, and then to be like, "Holy shit!" Double check, and then, and then, good for her to be able to put a stop to it and be like, "Hey, no, like yeah. you either play by the rules or get the fuck out." Like, yeah, yeah, so. and that's what was going to happen. Yeah, and we've only had two bad experiences in this whole year, and that was the first one, which just made us think. And I said, "I'm sorry, I'll pay more attention." And she said, "Hey, you know, it's my, my responsibility primarily. I would appreciate backup, but sometimes I go get a glass of water. Sometimes I go to get something when I come back." Um, but she takes no responsibility and says, "It's my job to make sure everything's okay." She can have like two beers, which you know, is strange, and I just don't drink at all. So. Um, we don't get too drunk to, we don't make that bad decisions while drinking. Yeah. 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 Well, and I mean, as a woman, from a woman's point of view, I can understand like you, you have to, like, you just have to check, like you have to, and you can do it very, um, it doesn't have to be a big deal to check if the condom's on, but you definitely need to, yeah. and you need to be aware. You can't just assume that um, the other person is, Yeah always has it on you bet and we'll get engaged with men and she'll say if you put a condom on that i want to have it and he'll say for oral and he'll say oh no i don't do that she says okay then then i don't do that yeah exactly yeah and i love that yeah no that's amazing and i think that's that's excellent to hear yeah it makes us happy and yeah can you talk a little bit about like how your process for vetting people because it and and i don't mean this in a negative way but it sounds like there are quite a few people and it sometimes it's multiple people in one evening at a club or potentially yeah. three people coming over or more like, yeah. so vetting, vetting that, that number of people, how, how do you do it? And to have as many good experiences as you've had is, is impressive. So, um, so it is a lot of people. It's, it's a surprising amount. Um, surprisingly, I, I enjoy it. I don't have a problem with it, but, um, if it's too different, if we go to a club, it's one set of situations and rules. If we are vetting people online, it's different because online you tell them to read my profile, and then uh, and then we check back in and we're planning something. We'll say, did you read the profile? Did you read it from top to bottom? Because we have boundaries in there that we're not gonna whatever. And I say, and and we don't want to disappoint you because if we get there and you don't agree to it, it's just not happening. We're not going to be pressured into it or we're not going to be cornered. So that's easy because all the boundaries are up front in a club. Uh, it tends to be a lot more loose. And um, so then you have to have the conversations verbally and I'm uncomfortable with it, but she can just talk. She can just say the words. She just does it. Um, and so um, typically I have to leave her for someone to come up to her because in a club, people, the, pers- the assumption is that couples only play with couples. 
and we'll go in and we'll walk around and maybe we'll spend as much as an hour or an hour and a half walking around, talking to people, just checking in, saying hi. Um, and then at some point, but no one will come up to us. We're also not seeking eye contact with couples because we're not there to meet couples. And then after a while, I'll go off and I'll say, I'm going to take a walk around and go check out the playrooms or what's happening. I'll come back 50 minutes later and she's got a guy or two around her, but they won't make the approach until I'm gone. Um, something but um and then she talks to him about and then who she's attracted to and who looks like fun and sounds like fun she has a series of questions i guess um i'd love to hear those conversations but if i was there to hear them they probably wouldn't happen and so i just get to kind of go distance from it and then come back and then she'll come and she tells them exactly what we're doing and then she'll say i need to go find my husband and then she'll come and find me and say i'm ready to play are you interested and i'll say well let's meet him and then we go and meet him and i've never said no because whatever she's attracted to is fine to me and it's really fun. And I've heard on your show people talk about everything from, you know, needing to permanent, permanent friendships or partnerships with people. We don't do that. Um, versus people who literally call them throwaways. So that's far too, that's uncomfortable for me or us. Um, we wouldn't do that. We wouldn't call somebody that. But we don't need to know their names, to be honest. We're having fun. We're practicing safe. We're using safe practices. And so it can be anywhere from one to five or six people. And she's just getting off over and over again. I'm loving watching it. And then they go off and do their thing. And as long as we're safe, it doesn't matter. Sometimes they'll introduce themselves at the end, which is interesting. Um, but it's just fine. Everybody's enjoying themselves. And um, we like the clubs where they have tight security, where people walk around and checking in. After a while, you don't see them. But if anything were going awry, you could say, hey, this guy won't take no for an answer. Or this guy's too drunk or whatever. And then um, they ask him to follow the rules or leave. So yeah. and that's only happened once. Yeah. Right. Has well, there been times where you have played with guys uh, or she's played with guys uh, multiple times then? Um, in the club, yeah, we have in L.A. There's been a guy that came in and he was the first one that she that she partied with. And then he went off for a while and then he came back and she was still going. And so he came in and played again. And um, they they were really, they clicked. And so it was great to watch. Cool. Right. So but it's, it's typically not you meet somebody and then maybe – Every month you see the same person. Or it's it's usually like we meet some people, we have some fun, and then we, we most likely never see them again. Yeah, We most likely never see them again, yeah. So um, that, I guess that means we're sluts. Um, we didn't <laughs> intend for that to happen, but that seems to be what happened. And she just doesn't want a connection with them. It's not about that. And we're not looking to um, um, replace anything. We're just looking to add. And so, yeah. And we've been to clubs and we've seen people that we played before with and we say hi to them, but it doesn't progress. Yeah. Okay. Well, and I think you can own that word slot. It doesn't have to be a negative term. It's it's it works. Okay. works it, what, it is what works for you, and that and, that's perfectly fine. Well, I, and and, I, and you're being safe and considerate, and all of the things that go along with that. And I, I think and it's respectful. awesome. And respectful, yeah. yes. Yeah. I think it's awesome too that like it's not always easy for people, men, men or women or, or anybody really to disconnect sometimes the, the feelings and the sex. But it, it seems like for her and for you, like it's, it's just a total, like it's something fun that we do. And this is the person that we're going to do that fun thing with. And then when it's done, like we don't, we don't need it to be much more. And yeah, I think that's, uh, that's fascinating mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i think uh, you know even on your side right there's we've we've met other people who do some of the hot wifing stuff and and the men talk about how like they want to get to know the other guy they want to make sure you know he's a good guy and he's doing this and he's doing that but you know you let her do all of the vetting because it's it's her who's going to be doing it and you just kind of let her roll and do what she does and i think i think that's it's it's pretty cool yeah and it, obviously you would probably stop something if something like, if it was going awry very quickly or something but mm -hmm. you bottom line you trust your wife to make those decisions and um mm -hmm. whatever she, you know she says is cool and that's yeah. that's pretty awesome yeah you guys talk about or you and other podcasts talk about taking where there's situations where somebody takes one for the team yeah and in this situation that hasn't happened yet because it, we don't have to consider what the other person um, is actively engaged in or not. So it's really weird. I mean, you, I, I couldn't have written this, yeah. but it's it's fascinating. We're heading uh, tomorrow, tomorrow morning or the next morning for town, and we can't wait to um, go play. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm curious. So is there ever any bit, like, it sounds like, again, you're, I know I've said it like seven times, but it sounds like. <laughs> 
your pleasure really comes from watching her pleasure. And does it ever like, is it ever triggering at all where maybe the people that she's playing with look or are totally different from you? And so, I mean, that that is something we've heard from people that it can be like, well, if she's attracted to that person, how also is she still attracted to me? Has that ever like yeah. crept in? Um, so we are white middle class people, and I I don't I don't judge and I don't care, and she doesn't judge and she doesn't care. She says a confident man's an attractive man, and some demographics or some races or makeups or body types are more confident than others, and. If they're having fun and they're happy and they're proud and they're ready for pleasure and she's the same, it's a match made in heaven. I'm not challenged by any of it. Some guys are bigger, have bigger tools. Some are smaller. Some can go a long time or short. They're enjoying each other and um, it takes all kinds. And she's good at compartmentalizing um, that, you know, we meet them, they talk for a while, they play, they kiss and hug and the guy goes off and gets a drink or whatever. And um, we either stay or we go. So it's a match made in heaven. Yeah. So it sounds like to answer your question, no, not really. Yeah, no. <laughs> Was there a question in there? Yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 all it's fascinating because it's it's a it's largely the opposite of what you normally hear. Oh yeah, where, I mean, and I and I imagine it's hard for a lot of people to wrap their minds around, yeah. but it it works for you too. Uh, yes. Yeah. If I heard this like three years ago, I would have said, "So she's a whore, and he's weak and soft and can't stick up for themselves." himself and this that is just not what has happened um and it's so fascinating it's two people who are consenting adults who agree to do something and it surprises them and so they do more of it and i'm i'm really here because i think people can try it i think more people would enjoy it if they tried it and i can play anytime i want she and i could get in the main bed in the middle of a room with 50 people watching and i would be fine with it and she would be fine with people watching the whole thing I want to wait for that. I want to watch her do her thing for a while. I want to enjoy that artwork in action. She looks good. She smells good. She sounds good. And then I get to play when I want. And I mean, isn't that a win-win-win for me? So yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And has there any, has there, I guess, been a time where you've considered finding other women to, to for you as well? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and there have been times when a guy that wanted to play with her, one of the guys, his girlfriend or wife was along and she came along and I can play some. But I, the bottom line is I don't want to miss anything. I don't need anything else. She knows all how to do the wonderful things with and for me. And so that's where I want to end up. Um, so I can play a little bit with somebody, but I'm I'm just not that interested. Yeah. yeah. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's yeah, not you're weird. such a weirdo. <laughs> It's okay, it's unusual. It's a statistic yeah. impossibility. Yeah. I think it's probably more common than people are willing to admit. Yeah, probably. But, and do you both identify as straight? From what you're talking about, that's what you're describing. But I just wanted to yes. put that out there. Yeah, yeah, totally straight, yeah. yeah. And we're not uh, homophobic. We're not biphobic. Sometimes people come in and they misunderstand what's happening and I'll be there and maybe we'll be, one of us will be in the front of her and one of us is in the back and somebody will reach around and grab me and I don't recoil, but I'm just not into it. And so I think it becomes obvious pretty quick that I'm just, I'm doing, I'm, I'm already doing what I'm here for. And so yeah. um, I say no thanks or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the sometimes. best way to handle that situation. You didn't, you didn't freak out or yell or anything. It's just like, you yeah. know, just be very polite about it and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. The only time it's a challenge is when I thought we talked about that and then we get in there and they reach sometimes maybe they didn't have the courage to say what they were actually there for. Um, and then it comes out over time. But that's that kind of surprise can be uh, surprising. Right. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it sounds like you have checked a lot of the boxes that you would ever could ever have dreamed of checking. Are there are there still things that you're you're learning about her and that you're learning about yourself that you're, you're still growing and being like, Oh, this is something I hadn't thought of six months ago, but now I'm interested in, or here's like, it just, I don't know. It's, it's cause it seems like from the outside, it's like, we've, we, we can literally do anything we want and we've done more than many people can ever dream of, but like, are there still things you're learning about each other? Well, I would have said no, but a few months ago, I, um, we we're going to Seattle for a special event. And so 
I said, how would you like to have a gangbang? How would you like to be the, the center of attention in the gangbang? And she said, sure, which totally knocked my socks off. I thought she'd say, eh, well, let's see what happens when we get there. And so I established a profile on that life, and I posted a letter there. And then uh, we probably had um, 20 men apply that they want to be a part of this thing. And so I vetted them because like, we had clear age boundaries, but you know, not everybody can read numbers in any way. So we kind of took out the too old and took out the too young and then checked people by body type and what they were there for and if they were close. Um, and we did a kick. We kicked with them, uh, got their kick address, so we communicated that way. And then we lined it up and had um, four guys planned. Three of them showed up. And we went to an adult um, movie, like a movie house type of thing. There were, are, mm -hmm. There's a clean one and a not clean one. This was a really clean, nice one. And I said ahead of time, I said, so we're the husbands and she's the wife. And so please protect her because the public is there. There are just random people that are there. They don't know our boundaries. They don't know our rules. And so please, if anybody comes in or tries to participate, please say, excuse, that's my wife. And this is a closed party. Any one of you. And then that's what happened. And uh, that was a beautiful thing to watch which I never would have guessed a couple of years ago that I would be into that or uh, watching it or feel safe with it. But it was amazing. They went for a really long time and um, she had a ton of fun and everybody else did and everybody's needs were met. And it was an amazing thing. Of course, they've reached out since then. When are you coming back? When are you coming back? How's it going? Not not um, abusive or not um, nagging or stalking or lur even lurking. Just if you do it again, I'd love to be a part of it. And they were, so, yeah, they were showing interest. Oh, they were, yeah, they were showing it, but they were calm and respectful. They stuck to the boundaries. They were always safe. Nobody was weird. Nobody, um, you know, it was just a really, it was exactly what she wanted to have happen. And so it was a perfect scenario. Yeah. Sounds like you throw a hell of a party. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ow. Ow. Yeah. Well, and did, I'm curious, like, did, did, did they have instances where people tried to join? Oh, yeah. 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 Guys would, you know, there are people hanging out and because there's a huge, you know, there's a big porn thing porn television on the wall right there and we're in the middle and there's like a series of sofas like the naga hide type of sofas and all that um and we're just doing our thing kind of taking turns and watching and enjoying it and changing places and positions and people and then there were other people that just tried to walk up and the guys would say two or three times they said excuse that's my wife and this is a closed party and they were thinking i could see them thinking wait if that's your wife then who's that guy but it's the closed party that um yeah and everybody was respectful nobody said you know what are you some kind of asshole or something so yeah, good, good, good to hear. So I have a question. Um, the how about outside of the two of you? Have you told anybody else in your mm -hmm. lives, family, friends, or and how? If you have, how has that gone? I have a best friend that I told, and she has a best friend that she told. Now, telling you know you can say a lot without giving all the details. So we told people yeah. that we play out of town. We've had friends say, well, you guys have been traveling a ton. And we always have home improvement projects going. And when I get into it, I really get into it. And so like I'll spend two weeks working on a project. And they said, you've been taking a lot of breaks from your home improvement to go on a lot of vacations. And um, we said, yes. And sometimes they say, you know, or she said to my wife, what, what are you doing or what's happening? And she'd say, actually, we're playing. We found some adult clubs and we enjoy playing in public. And Maybe a question or two is asked, but not enough because I don't think she would give all the details because not everybody can handle that because it tends to be a slippery slope. Yeah. Um, and then I told my friend based just basically what's going on. And he said, that sounds awesome. He's about 20 years older than me. And he said, if I were 20 years younger, I'd be doing that. And he said, how awesome it is that you figure out what you really like while you're young enough to do it. He said, because the truth is, the older you get, the more you realize you should have gone for it. And he said, I didn't go for it. I should have gone for it. So, yeah. At the same time, we have talked to people that are older and they're making it work. So, and they're having yes. fun and having yeah. a blast. So Good. it's not too late for him necessarily. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> um, yeah. He we're... says that ship has sailed and I don't, I don't ask a lot about what that means, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think, I think we have proof that it hasn't, but we won't argue with it. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's his personal decision. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. But so, that's, that's really, that's awesome that at least you have a couple people that, you know, you've opened up to not the whole story, but you can tell, you know, a little bit about it and, and feel open enough to do that. Yeah. yeah. So are there, it sounds like, you know, 20 years ago, you would never have imagined this is where you would be. Is that correct? Correct. Right. So do you have like any words of advice or tips for, for men or women who are interested 
in this or on the flip side who are saying that shit's way too crazy. I could never do that. Like what, what do you say to, to that? I guess. Um, longevity matters and it's all about trust. The reason I'm not jealous is because I trust her. Right. Um, and we've been together almost 30 years. So, um, not a lot of surprises at this point. Um, but it's an evolution. Um, and we communicate a ton about it. Of course, well, not of course, but I think in most situations, the guys tend to want to talk about it a lot more than the women, getting ready for it during it and after downloading it. And I'm that guy. I just wear her out with questions or comments or statements or retouching back with it. Um, yeah, it's terrific. It's about communication. Um, and we, we both have the right to say yes. We both have the right to say no and fully empowered and not implied and not kind of, but we really have the right. And so it feels safe to both of us, I'm sure. I'm, yeah. Yeah. Well, that makes sense, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a question. Now. I can't remember what it was. But it was fascinating. I know. It always happens to me. It always happens. <laughs> oh, have, have you, con- I know you mentioned, like, you've just out of curiosity, you've traveled around a lot in the, on the West Coast. Have you considered traveling further than that and experiencing what, uh, you know, other places might be like? Yes. So um, we have been to all around Florida, lots of clubs in Florida, lots of clubs in the New York area, um, uh, New Mexico, Southern California, Sacramento, San Francisco, Portland, um, Seattle. After something we heard recently, now we want to go to Toronto, something we heard on your uh, website, makes sense about Toronto. You had a same-sex couple on, um, uh-huh. and their story was awesome. I mean, one of the partners was me, and one of the partners was her. It was just same-sex, and it was fascinating to hear their perspectives and the words they used, and it really made me identify with them. Yeah. Cool. That's awesome, and I think that's really cool that the you were able to make that parallel across gender which is yeah. which yeah. i think is fascinating just relationship style so it surprised for, me yeah but it was yeah. yeah yeah for anybody who's probably wondering what one that was that was an episode with the torrid souls who, yeah. who yes. also have a, who also have a podcast of their own so you can we'll put that link to yeah, that episode definitely in the check them show out. notes and All right. i think i think what emma was fishing for was she missed the fact that your wife is not bisexual she was trying to say come <laughs> Come visit, but she missed she missed that important piece of the puzzle. Well, so. Of course, come visit, but we're also traveling a lot. Maybe we can meet up yeah. somewhere. Yeah, and we love nice people. We really love to meet people and to talk to them. And um, my boundaries are more firm than hers. So she isn't against being pleasured by a woman. She's just not turned on pleasuring a woman. And she likes reciprocity. It feels better to her. And so she she could say to a woman, um, I mean, if you want to, I'd love to enjoy that, but. I'm not into giving it. And so if you're okay with that, I'm okay with that. But it feels out of balance. And how do you feel about that? And people yeah. tend to say, oh, that's great. We'll get back to you. And poof, they're gone. And that's totally fine. It's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's just, you know, she's she would enjoy it. And she is honest about it. And she wouldn't reciprocate. And she, her job is just to say it up front and then let people enjoy yeah. it. But if it's kind yeah. of an orgy situation, then everybody's needs can be met. So, but, yeah. yeah. Well, I think just... Your communication is on a next level, like yeah. between each other, but also with just, other people. You just voice exactly what it is you want, how you do it, and what you're expecting out of it, and then it's people can take it or they can leave it, and sounds like a lot of them take it. Yeah, so. in a, in a loving way though, I mean, it's a exactly. take it or leave it thing exactly. in a loving way. Yeah, you said Emma in the podcast before that if people don't want to follow your agreements to play, that you're okay, as opposed, I mean, which is something of the next next opportunity mentality or something um, which is different than take it or leave it which is different than i'm too i can't communicate so anything goes but you can be respectful and still have great firm boundaries and so i love that it's totally respectful and super yeah. attractive yeah. Yeah. yeah well it sounds like your wife is um someday with up to mirror because she sounds like so confident in what she's doing and has the ability to use her words and explain things to make the situations comfortable for everyone it's what she does for a living and it's how yeah. people would know her voice. And so I'm butting up against a hard boundary there, but yes. So, and when it comes to things about to talking about consent, she could teach a PhD on consent and what it means and how it changes and what, it, what people are saying without saying it. Um, she's a huge fan of consent and what it really means and how people, sometimes we get ourselves into things we don't mean to because we can't be firm or assertive. And then we wonder what happened. What happened was we, we weren't honest up front. So yeah. it's easier yeah. to say no thank you than it is to say stop, you know. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah, so that's, that's kick ass. I know. I'm just like, it's, it's, I want to, I want to take that course. I know. And I want you to take that course too. Yeah. Both of us. <laughs> it's, it's, it's as somebody who tends to, well, both of us have a lot of patience and, um, for different people, especially in our, in the past. Just and, not each other. Well, no, not each other, but <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to go there. Uh, in, in, and I say that in like in situations where we should not have been patient, we should have voiced our uncomfortability to each other or to the situation and just gotten out of there. And yeah. we have learned that we need to do that. Um, but it, it took a process of, of learning how to do that. And yeah. uh, that is not easy for everyone, but it's so important because you, you can do it in a respectful and considerate um, way without being an asshole, but also getting yourself out of a situation that you don't even be in anymore. Um, but, yeah, no, thank you. is really powerful. And yes. it's not like fuck off or get off me or what are you doing? It's just a no, thank you. And people yeah. tend to, with one exception, we've had really good results. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Well, before we let you go, is there anything else that you wanted to share that you I mean, passionate about this. Is there anything you want to get out there and and tell people before we let you get back to your day? Wow. Um, If people think that it's not for them, hot wifing, hot wifing in general, watching a person's partner can be truly amazing. I I learn things. Um, 30 years we've been together, and I still learn things because sometimes – there will be a twist or a turn or something, and I think, wow, I'm picking up on that. And it's just different people with different experiences. And so taking a night of not engaging, if we were a, if we were a true swinger couple, two-on-two, two-on-four type of thing, I might miss something. But if I just get to sit back and watch, be 30 years or not, there's a lot to be learned, and it's just fascinating. And I bring it up afterwards, and she still kind of bristles, well, you know, what if he – I, I think she's thinking, what if I hurt him by telling me this? I know I don't get her off 24 times. I can do the math. So if something's different about the longevity or about what's happening, I can totally be part of that and be loving with it. I'm not challenged by it. I'm totally confident. And so I think men might surprise, or partners, same sex, or men might enjoy themselves sitting back and spending a night watching and learning. Um, you know, you can always learn a bunch partner. Yeah. Well, and I think part of it is also uh, just knowing that your partner always has your best interest in mind. And then even if they do something that might hurt you, they might not realize they're doing it. And you can come back and talk about that afterward and, and course correct. But, you know, throughout that whole thing, being able to keep in mind that um, it's an adventure, you're, you're doing something together that would be, that could be, it could be amazing. It could also bring up some feelings that you might not be ready for, but just to keep in mind, you're both of you are always trying to keep the other ones per- you know, interests and I guess, um, best interests in at heart, you know, you're never trying to do something that would actually hurt the other one and yeah, being able to have move, keep that mindset moving forward, I think is really important. Yeah. Yeah. It's been super fun. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, we wish you happy, happy trails mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. thank you for sharing everything. And I mean, it, it just, it's, it's inspiring to see two people who, come at it from a way that we don't hear about a lot, but it's clear that they're just both so supportive and, and, and lockstep. And yeah. we love that. And hopefully your story will help some other people come out of the woodwork and share their story too. Yes. Yeah. Cause I'm not risking my anonymity for nothing. I mean, I'm doing it because <laughs> I want people to try it. They might enjoy it and learn something cool and advance their relationships. Yeah. Well, we appreciate it. And I know somebody out there is also appreciating it. So yeah. cool. Thank you, and have an excellent day. Give our best to Cece. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will be in touch. Sounds great. Thank you. Take care. Thank you so much. Well, hello. (laughs) We're back. Thanks to Steve and Cece, too. Yeah, for consenting to let Steve talk about all of her uh, wild trysts. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It was awesome talking to Steve and seeing the dynamic that they have. And uh, we were bummed not to talk to Cece, but thank you so much for, I guess, just coming on the show and sharing. We're excited to get it out there. Yes. One thing we just wanted to mention is 
Uh, we're not going to go into any details about different resources we have, but we just wanted to remind people, if you go to our website, normalizingnonmonogamy.com. That is like the third or fourth time you said that. And you go to the resources <laughs> page, there's a whole list of different resources. Some of them are free. Some of them are not free. Some of them support the show. Some of them don't. So just check them out. They're all things that we've used and love and recommend uh, for various reasons. And so just check that out. And next week, for real this time, next week. Yeah. We've for got... For real, next week we have M and Steve. Another Steve. Another Steve, but this one's Australian. That's true. So you won't get them confused. Yeah. And uh, we're super excited. This one is... Uh, <laughs> it's this a crazy one, story. This one's a, a crazy story. It's a bit of a goofy couple who also have, like... A goofy in a wonderful way. I was not. I would never call anyone goofy in a mean way. They're also, it's it's a really weird and amazing blend of funny and serious and touching. Yeah. Consensual touching. Yeah, I'm sure. So, so tune ex- in next Wednesday for that one. Set your set your podcast players <laughs> to normalizing <laughs> non-monogamy, and we'll, we'll see you in a week. Bye, everyone. Thanks for listening. <laughs>